Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> West Troop. And this week we are here to talk about the trending topics that went down in the Disney parks. And I'm going to take a look at one of the special nighttime attractions that just opened recently at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So, let's uh, get this party started, shall we? This week, uh, we're going to kick off with the uh, show with a little bit of info on The Jungle Book, live with magic. Let's do it. <laughs> so, The Jungle Book, live with magic, begins when enchanting music plays to welcome the watchers. Small boats bring actors over to a split stage um, and also come in front of the audience, sort of like um, like in front of the water, where the, right where the audience is. They're also there, and then they're also over on a, on a stage that's basically split in half in the water. Well, you know, on a stage in the water, <laughs> not swimming in the water doing acting. That would be pretty cool, but they're, they're not. And then uh, projections show behind that, uh, the projection showing a copy of the book itself, uh, the Jungle Book, of course, and opens with Bagheera narration, much like the movie. The wolves quoting the law of the jungle is seen in the projection, uh, and cast members acted out on the stage and, of course, in the audience. And then we see Shere Khan's threat um, and the sad speech from Raksha to Mowgli. And then we begin a song and dance where uh, the, the music is played by the actors and they begin to dance. So uh, yay for the sad speech, I guess. <laughs> um, more projections, uh, music and narration uh, come back. Um, talking about the greatness of the elephants. from This is all from the movie. Uh, these projections are all from the movie. Um, Shere Khan's chase scene when he chases Mowgli and ends up fighting Bagheera. By the way, there could be spoilers if you haven't seen this movie. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't seen the movie, well, you're going to know it by the time you finish this episode or you see the show. Then, after the projections of Shere Khan's chase, we hear the sexy voice of Scarlett Johansson. Oh, yeah. Okay, back to the family show. Family show. Okay. All right, Wes. Cool it down. Get me some water. All right. <laughs> As Ka. Um, and, you know, you hear her lines from the movie and the projection. Uh, but someone else sings the psychedelic song. Trust in me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we don't use the version from the movies. It's actually um, live performers singing the song. And then we have projections and music of Baloo and Mowgli. And an actor sings, Look for the band necessities. And the singer, in the video I saw at least, Sounds a lot like one of the singers from the Festival of the Lion King who sings, Be Prepared, which is good. That's a good thing. So they might be double dipping <laughs> with their actors, which is perfectly fine. Uh, then we, after that, we get the King Louis projections. <laughs> the Christopher Walken. <laughs> Call me Louis. Hey. <laughs> Uh, that was more like Travolta, that impersonation, but anyway, <laughs> John Travolta is King Louis. All right, um, I Want to Be Like You is sung, unfortunately not by Christopher Walken singing, uh, but we do get, uh, you might think it's magnificus that me, a gigantopithecus, I love that line, um, and then of course, <laughs> King Louis makes his big announcement, and then we get the chase through the temple. Uh, Mowgli running with the fire towards the finale. And that's when something really cool happens. Fire dancers on the barges go by. Probably the fire dancers from Festival of the Lion King. <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, how many fire dancers in the Animal Kingdom are there? Um, 
but uh, I thought that was pretty neat. Mowgli goes uh, on, on the projections. Mowgli faces off with Shere Khan. And then we have the finale, the Law of the Jungle speech. And then there's music and dancing by the music and dancers. And by the way, the dancers dance to all the songs. And then the finale is a mix of I Want to Be Like You, Trust in Me, Bare Necessities. And then the actors just sort of leave. <laughs> so... There's been a lot of people that said they didn't like this show. And, you know, it's, I thought it was okay. We'll just we'll start there. <laughs> it's nice to see a nighttime experience at Disney's Animal Kingdom, finally. I'm just glad they got something there. Um, you know, the show itself was okay for being thrown together at the last minute when Rivers of Life wasn't going to be ready in time. And they were like, you know what, we gotta have something, because people, we wanna, you know, when Memorial Day comes, we want the park open later. So, because Rivers of Light wasn't ready in time, they had to throw something together. Jungle Book was a good box office draw. People liked it, makes sense, put it in the Animal Kingdom. So, you know, I thought it was fine for what it was. Um, if you watch the video, the pr from what I'm told, because I've watched the video, the projections look better in person than it does on YouTube. <laughs> which makes sense, because Fantasmic is Fantasmic and World of Color, which, you know, of course are projection shows, well, World of Color even more than Fantasmic, um, relies heavily on projections, World of Color. If you watch it on video, it's just like, eh, whatever. But if you watch it live, it's much better and you get the feeling. So maybe, you know, it, it looks a lot better live is what I'm being told. At least the projections. Um, I thought it was a good retelling of the movie. And I like the dancing and the music. And of course the fire uh, dancers on the barges. The opening seemed a bit <laughs> unneeded with the arrival of the actors to the stage on the water. Um... They sort of like take two or three minutes to get the actors over on from well, who knows where they're coming from on the boats onto the stage. And it's sort of like, oh, boy, um, perhaps they could already be on the stage when the show starts. I don't know. Just a thing. Or maybe that was just part of a pre-show thing. I'm not quite sure. But that's where the video I saw <laughs> began. And it was like, okay, how about we don't have three minutes of these random dancers just sort of coming onto the stage on the water? How about they're already there when it begins? That's just my two cents. Anyway, I wouldn't book a vacation to go see this show. But if I was there, I would definitely stick around at night or go back to Disney's Animal Kingdom uh, to see it in person. And, you know, my biggest takeaway from this, because this is a... Uh, not a full-time uh, experience. This is a temporary thing till Rivers of, Rivers of Life comes up. Um, I'll be excited as to see how Rivers of Life improves upon this show. So that is basically all for that. Um, if you want to check out Jungle Book Alive with Magic, check it out. on The videos are on the internet. And of course, if you're lucky enough, you can see it in person. Um, I, you know, I'd recommend checking it out. Check out all the Animal Kingdom stuff after dark because it's pretty cool to finally be there, you know, after hours. Not really after hours, but you know what I mean. So, on to the news. Disney has launched a new pre... Oh, this is also at the Animal Kingdom, by the way. Disney has launched a new premium tour experience at Disney's Animal Kingdom that will take guests into the Harambe Wildlife Reserve after dark. There you go. They gotta get their money, money. Yeah, yeah, that money, money. Yeah, yeah. Tour groups for this special experience are limited to only 12 guests and includes a two-hour safari, complimentary photo services, a souvenir which will probably be um, zebra crap, <laughs> and a food and drink as well. The tours will be offered daily beginning on June 26th and will take place at 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, and 7.30. Now, this is totally different from the normal safari. Um, this is a, just a special, obviously, with just 12 people, 
it's a special experience that you have to pay for. Um, the regular safari, uh, Kilimanjaro safari after dark, is not. You don't have to pay for that. <laughs> um, the cost for this one is $169, and park admission is required, and it's not included in that $169. So if you just want that, and you don't have your five-day pass or anything, it's going to cost you $269, basically uh, $250 at least, to get in for that experience. Um, so, but if you do a park admission, then it's going to cost you $169 on top of what you already have. Um, you know, I've never done one of these wildlife reserve tours. Um, you know, if someone paid for me, I'd do it. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I keep it cheap. <laughs> when I, I like my souvenirs and my food when I go. I'd rather not starve. So, um, you know, if you're into that, you like doing the premium tours, then definitely I, I would think it would be worth checking out. Um, once the tours start, I guess we'll hear more about how cool it is and whatnot. But until then, we just got to take the word of... Uh, <laughs> of people who think it'll be cool, I guess. Um, so moving on. That is the uh, news from the Animal Kingdom this week. We're going to park hop over to Magic Kingdom, where Advanced Dining has finally made its way to the Skipper Canteen Restaurant at the Magic Kingdom. The restaurant has only been taking walk-up guests and same-day reservations in the months since it's been open. But now the Skipper Canteen will begin taking advance reservations starting immediately. So right now, this very second, via the My Disney Experience service. I did not realize that they did not do, um, you know, uh, advanced reservations. I just would have assumed they would have. That's weird. They just walk up in the same day. But anyway, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Get it, Skipper Canteen? <laughs> anyway. So that is that. If you're, if you're interested in eating at the Skipper Canteen restaurant, which I sort of am, just know you can book advance reservations now. And last week, I discussed the new bus routes you have to take to get to either of the Disney water parks. In fact, I said it twice if you're staying on the resort. This week, more info has come out. Oh, man. Whoa, mama. Guests wanting to get to Typhoon Lagoon from a resort will need to take a bus to Disney Springs, which will also make a stop at Typhoon Lagoon. Before 1 o'clock p.m., a bus transfer at Disney Springs won't be necessary. But after this time, a bus change might be required. Oh, it might, might it? Um, and guests wanting to go to Blizzard Beach will first need to take a bus to Disney's Animal Kingdom and then transfer to a bus going directly to Blizzard Beach from the Animal Kingdom. But if you happen to be a guest staying at the All-Star Resorts, Animal Kingdom Lodge, or Coronado Springs Resort, you can still enjoy your direct bus service to Blizzard Beach and you don't have to transfer at the Animal Kingdom. So we. Uh, I, I usually stay at the uh, Coronado or the All-Star, so looks like I'm pretty cool with that, at least. Now, next time, you know, I won't stay at either one. <laughs> or, or I won't go to Blizzard Beach. <laughs> either way. But uh, that is important to know if you are a resort guest, how to get to the water parks if you want to get wet. Um, moving on. <laughs> also, well, not really moving on, but we're moving on to a different topic for these water parks. Also, preferred parking is now available at Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon. Remember I was saying about the preferred parking at Hollywood Studios last week? Like at the main parks, guests can pay an additional $15 fee in addition to the existing cost to park that will allow you to park a little bit closer to the main entrance. Those who take advantage of the option will also get a complimentary bottle of water for everyone in the car as well. Which means every single person gets a bottle, not just one. Here, share a bottle of water for five people, why don't you? Thanks for paying the $15 fee. <laughs> um, yeah, wow, a bottle of water. And who says Disney? you don't get anything free at Disney? <laughs> um, <laughs> a bottle of water from Water Park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking. I'm choking over here. But anyway, um, yeah. So if you want to pay the extra fifteen dollars to 
did not walk a couple of feet, <laughs> then by all means, pay it. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back next week with another trending topic show, and make sure you look out for the latest Hitchhiking Host Show 101, which will be coming out later this week. Until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitch Show. You can like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hitch Show. Follow on the Twitter and the Instagram at Hitch Show. And of course, if you're listening to the show or you want to listen to the show, you can do so on Podbean. It's HitchHoShow.Podbean.com. And of course, look for the show on iTunes and Instagram. Instagram. iTunes and Stitcher. Search under The Hitchhiking Ho Show or West Troop. Until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. Hurry back. For the next episode, see ya.